Hey everyone, if you have Hashimoto's, today's video may help save your life. I know that sounds dramatic, but here's what I'm talking about. New research shows that Hashimoto's patients have bad blood vessels, basically. They are at risk for something called atherosclerosis, and that's hardening of the arteries, and that is a major cause of stroke and heart attack. So yeah, today we're going to talk about atherosclerosis and Hashimoto's patients, why it happens, what you can do about it, and yeah, it really might save your life. So let's get into it. So first we have to define a few terms, right? Now we know what Hashimoto's is. That's an autoimmune thyroid condition. It's the most common cause of hypothyroidism. But what is atherosclerosis? Well, atherosclerosis is what we used to call hardening of the arteries. And really what we're talking about is something called endothelial dysfunction, okay? The endothelium is a deep layer of your blood vessels, right? And I'll show you a picture of that. Now what happens in atherosclerosis is lipids get deposited into this endothelium and you start to get problems with inflammation, problems with a lack of nitric oxide. There's some heavy biochemistry, I'm gonna skip it. But we've known for a while that atherosclerosis, there's some risk factors for that. Known risk factors include things like dyslipidemia, like your lipids are too high, uh, type two diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, uh, smoking, and endothelial dysfunction. Endothelial dysfunction is basically the start of atherosclerosis. And if atherosclerosis gets bad enough, you can have a heart attack and a stroke. And the problem is, most of the, the first symptom for most people that they have atherosclerosis is the heart attack or the stroke. Okay, now, how does this relate to thyroid patients? It's been known for a while that people that have subclinical or overt hypothyroidism are at risk for endothelial dysfunction and atherosclerosis. But no one really looked specifically at Hashimoto's patients and euthyroid Hashimoto's patients. So let's define those terms. So if you guys remember, there's kind of a spectrum of Hashimoto's. Over here we have euthyroid, and that means that you have the elevated antibodies like thyroid peroxidase or thyroglobulin, but that's it. The TSH is normal, the free T4 is normal. The next progression is what we call subclinical hypothyroidism. And that can be a little bit confusing because the TSH is elevated, but the free T4 is normal, but you still have the antibody. So we call that Hashimoto's subclinical hypothyroidism. And then the last thing that it can progress to is what we call overt or just plain old hypothyroidism. And that's where the TSH is elevated and the free T4 is low, but Hashimoto's is the number one cause of hypothyroidism. So recent research has looked at something called endothelial dysfunction, we mentioned that a minute ago, in euthyroid Hashimoto's patients. So again, these are people that have the antibodies, but their TSH is normal and their free T4 is normal. So of the Hashimoto's spectrum, it's like the, the mildest form of it you can get, but all you have to have is the antibodies for things to go wrong, for things to be inflammatory. And don't forget that because Hashimoto's is an inflammatory condition. So they use this thing called an endopat. It doesn't really matter but they use something called a reactive hyperemia index. Essentially what they're looking at is how well does this endothelium uh, respond, right? So what they found is, is that in Hashimoto's patients, if you had TPO antibodies or TPO and thyroglobulin antibodies, you had worse endothelial function than people that didn't have Hashimoto's. And they found that uh, if you just had thyroglobulin antibodies alone, that was a little less, less bad than if you had both TPO. But the level of endothelial dysfunction matches up with the level of your thyroid peroxidase antibodies. So let me just review that again. What it means is all you have to have is the antibodies to start having this blood vessel problem, endothelial dysfunction, that contributes to atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries, which leads to things like stroke and heart attack. So yeah, if you get control of this now, it's a good chance you might save your own life or save yourself from a stroke or a heart attack. So why is this happening, right? Why is Hashimoto's associated with this? Well, I alluded to it a minute ago. It's because Hashimoto's is an inflammatory problem. By its very nature of being autoimmune, it is inflammatory. And we've known that Hashimoto's is associated with inflammation. So let's go over the what again. What's happening is, is that Hashimoto's patients, by the very nature of the condition they have, have increased risk for atherosclerosis because they have worse endothelial function than people that don't have Hashimoto's. We call that endothelial dysfunction. It's the first step towards developing hardening of the arteries, right? Why is it happening? Because Hashimoto's is inflammatory and thyroid peroxidase antibodies uh, and thyroid globulin antibodies, all that's part of an inflammatory process. Now, what should you do about it? Well, 
you need to be doing something to get control of your immune system. So how would you even know if that was happening? How do we know if you're getting control of your immune system? Well, number one, your antibodies need to be as low as possible. And remember, they always don't always correlate with how you feel. But we know that the higher your antibody levels are, the worse your endothelial function is going to be and the more prone to atherosclerosis you're going to be. So how would we do that? Well, what I like to do is I like to look at uh, lymphocyte map immunophenotyping. We start to look at a variety of different factors I don't have time to talk about, but the bottom line is you got to get your immune system under control. you got to work with someone that understands how to do that, and that's a big, big ask because you got to work with someone that can take the time to work with you as an individual, not try to push you through some sort of like, you know, cookie cutter protocol. That person's got to know what tests to do, right? So I like to organize my thinking around four priorities. I like to look at GI and liver problems, I like to look at energy production, and I like to look at the immunophenotype. And that could really go off in a lot of areas. Some people have food problems, some people have infections, some people have different nutrient deficiencies, some people have mitochondrial problems. I'm telling you all that so that you realize right now, just by having Hashimoto's, whether your TSH is normal or not, whether you take medication or not, you're at risk for something that could alter your life forever, perhaps even end your life, if you have a heart attack. Now, I hope that doesn't sound too dramatic because if you work with people like I have for 20 years, you've seen people that have strokes and heart attacks and you can imagine how uh, life altering that is. And I don't want that to happen to you. So you're gonna have to take some action. So you need to find someone that understands the gravity of the situation uh, that isn't just gonna say, hey, uh, take the thyroid medication, we'll see you back in a few months because it's bigger than that. And yes, I see people that don't feel good. I see people that have anxiety and brain fog and depression and muscle aches and joints and pains. This is a little bit different because it can be silent. So there's a whole kind of diagnostic thing we need to do specifically for what level of atherosclerosis do you have right now that you might not know, because remember, it's silent. You're not gonna have any symptoms of atherosclerosis until you have a stroke or a heart attack. So we gotta be proactive, not reactive. And I guess that's the main thing. You need to work with someone that understands you got to be proactive, not reactive, when it comes to atherosclerosis and endothelial dysfunction. All right, I hope you guys find that helpful. I'll see you next time.